What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out a pair of subwoofers from Arendel Sound, the 1723 Subwoofer 2V. The 1723 2Vs aren't available just yet, but you can pre-order them for its mid-October release. So shout out to Arendel Sound for sending these out early. Now per the instructions, you'll have to remove the top portion of the packaging. Pull the foam off and undo the drawstring bag. Now flip the box over, but be careful because it weighs 132 pounds, so don't go dropping it on your foot. Pull the box off and make a big mess on your floor. This is Arendel's biggest subwoofer. It measures 27 inches high by 19.6 inches wide by 23 inches deep. It's pretty tall and it's pretty deep. The color is a satin black dullish finish so it shouldn't reflect too much light. And it really is dense. The subs are in a dual opposed configuration so you're going to find 13.8 inch drivers on each side. It is a slot ported subwoofer with a removable foam plug if you want to use it sealed. Frequency response for EQ1 sealed is 17Hz, EQ2 is 24Hz, and EQ3 is 34Hz. EQ1 ported goes down to 15Hz, EQ2 ported goes down to 21Hz, and EQ3 in ported mode is 38Hz. Around back you'll find the 1200 watt amplifier with built in DSP, so you can change things like polarity, and there's also a 7 band PEQ for these new models. I'm also told that there is an app coming very soon, but in the meantime, you can make all the adjustments on the LCD screen. There's a 12 volt trigger, RCA ins and outs, and XLR ins and outs. One cool feature is that you can have dual source inputs, meaning XLR1 could be used with your stereo setup with its own presets, while XLR2 could be set up with your home theater system with its own presets. This way you can share one subwoofer with two systems and not have to use adapters or switchers for going back and forth. Oh, I forgot to mention, included with the subwoofer you get two grills, which attach magnetically on the outer rim here. Here's a subwoofer handbook, the unpacking guide, the power cord, and some white gloves. For setup, the two Vs will be hooked up to a Trinov Altitude 16 processor, and for source material, we'll be using a Zipidi 4K media player. I've placed one subwoofer in the front left corner of my theater, and the second one is in the opposite rear corner. This is where they sound the best. I've also turned off room correction in the processor, and only used the subwoofer's PEQ to get the best response for my room. Now these new Arendel subwoofers have a built-in DSP, which you can access from the display on the back of the subs. Here you can modify the settings for the XLR or the RCA inputs. I'll be using the XLRs. Under level, you can have the subwoofer at reference level, or keep it off and adjust the volume from the sub. You can adjust the input gain from plus 6 to negative 12. Under the crossover menu, you can change the EQ mode. The frequency response will change depending on which EQ you pick, and if you've decided to use it in either sealed or vented. I'll be going vented for the extra extension. You can keep the low pass bypass on if you're using the processor's crossover, or you can keep it off to adjust it from the subwoofer. If it's off, you can adjust the crossover from 160 down to 30 hertz. You can also adjust the slope, and there is a subsonic filter you can adjust as well. There's a variable phase, and here you can invert the signal. Under parametric EQ, as you can see, I've already made adjustments but you can change frequency, Q, and gain. Under input turn on control is where you can specify how the subwoofer turns on. It'll be a combination of one or two RCAs or XLRs or the 12 volt trigger.
For memory bank, you've got two available slots to save all your settings. If you're linking other subs together, you can change that here. And on time is where you can specify how long the subwoofer stays on before it turns off. For wake up sensitivity, there's normal, high, and low. And here you can change the backlight brightness. For LCD rotate, if you're going to be making adjustments from the top of the subwoofer, you can flip the display upside down so it's easier to read. First movie I popped in was Fury on 4K Blu-ray. This is a great flick to test how much punch a subwoofer's got. I mean, you can tell by the looks of them, these subwoofers are gonna slam, and they definitely pack a mean punch. With every tank blast and a machine gun fire, you can feel it in your body. I'm using these vented, but if you want to get a little more aggressiveness out of them, you can seal these guys up with the included plugs. Not only do they have that quick punchy responsiveness for explosive action, they're also tactile enough for more music-centric movies, where bass response should be more articulate, and these guys deliver there as well. Next movie I threw in was Interstellar. This is a 5.1 track with some crazy response around 30Hz, going down to 20Hz. This scene will have your walls vibrating heavily. I thought my light fixture was going to fall off the ceiling. If you want to go a little lower, the wormhole scene is a must to listen. Once again, these can put out some serious pressure in your room, and they can sustain these peaks without breaking a sweat. No matter how much I kept raising the volume, I never felt the drivers were ever going to run out of gas. And last but not least is the intro to Edge of Tomorrow. This goes down into the infrasonic realm, which not a lot of subwoofers can do justice with. Now this is a tough one to crack, and I gotta say, the Arendel 2Vs can't exactly produce that skin tingling, air vibrating, single digit response. They handled everything up until the very end, where you should feel the hair on the back of your neck move. They come up short here. Now if we take a look at the graph, you can see they start falling off around 10Hz in my room, which is still pretty amazing. They just don't have it in the single digits where that Edge of Tomorrow demo really takes off, if only for like 2 seconds. At the time of this video, a single 1723-2V retails for $24.99. I feel these subwoofers perform exactly the way you'd think they'd perform. They're physically big and dominant looking, and the sound is also big and dominant. 
they were amazing for any action movie spectacle with enough chest bumping slam you could want, yet they're nimble enough to sound impressive with music. If you're comfortable with adjusting the inbuilt PEQ, you can get some fantastic results and really fine tune the response. I do wish the app was already out to make the adjustments easier because running back and forth behind the sub kind of sucks. But as it stands, I think it's great these subs are very customizable. If I were to compare them with my PB16s, which are basically the same price and have just about the same feature set, I'd have to give the edge to the Arendels for having a more controlled sound signature. Not that the PB16s are terrible, it's just the two Vs do come across cleaner. Although, the PB16s will give me some of that infrasonic goodness that the Arendels lack. I guess you gotta pick your poison here. So those are my thoughts on the Arendel Sound subwoofer 2V. Are you guys in the market for a new subwoofer, and are the Arendels on your subwoofer shopping list? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if you found it useful, and if you're not a subscriber, be sure to tap that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.